We're Andrew and Kate. We share travel tips to help you see the world and have the best vacations ever. If you daydream about traveling to sunny Italy as often as we do, keep watching for a tour of the best of Rome. After a lovely night in Capri, we hopped a ferry to Naples and then took the high-speed train from Naples to Roma, Termini. About an hour later, we hopped off the train, used our Freenow app to get a ride into the city, and checked into our final Airbnb. We were starving, so we headed out for our favorite Italian lunch. Pizza followed by gelato. The suggestion of one of our Italian friends that has been here many times. We are at Pizza Buffetta, uh, which is right around the corner from our Airbnb, which is awesome. And it looks like a pretty happening place to sound like an 82 year old, but I love that we only hear Italian around us, so it means it's not a tourist trap and there's actual locals and grandparents and families eating here around us. So we both ordered our own pizzas and I can't wait to see them. is a very popular gelato spot here in Rome. Uh, it's one of the only places that does a dipped gelato. So you can get a cone or a cup that is dipped. And it's summer, so it's spilling. So you gotta eat it fast. Mm. It's so good. We got three different flavors. I'm oh. dropping it everywhere. No regrets. Look at the lime. Clearly a bus tour or something just came. We only had to wait like Four minutes, but it's worth worth every calorie and every minute. <laughs> <laughs> Very full and very happy. We went back to the Airbnb to crash until about 6 p.m. when the sun wasn't burning quite so hot and high, since the next stop was a brand new country, sort of. We were heading to the Vatican. One of the must-do things when you're in Rome isn't even technically in Rome. Right in the center of Rome is Vatican City, which is officially its own country, has its own languages, Latin and Italian, and is the smallest country in the world. So what can you do here? You can visit the St. Peter's Basilica, you can visit the Vatican Museum. There's a couple other little things, including their own post office. So come on in with us whenever we go into St. Peter's Basilica. You will not believe how gorgeous this place is. The first time we went to St. Peter's Basilica last year just blew my mind. It, I didn't know what I was getting into. I had no clue. You walk in and it's just huge ceilings all lined with gold. Just, I mean, awe-inspiring. I mean, you could see why people would come from all over the world to see St. Peter's Basilica. And when you come a second time, it's just as grand and just as exciting to see. I would truly try to convince anyone to visit. Mm -hmm. Whether you're Catholic, Protestant, non-religious, atheist, anything. Truly, it is just a gorgeous, marvel, yes. masterpiece. Definitely a must stop and a must do when coming to Rome. Since we waited to see the Vatican just before closing, it was dinner time, for us Americans at least. The next morning we woke up before the sun to make our way to make wishes in the Trevi Fountain. We're at the Trevi Fountain, about to throw some coins. What is it, good luck? Um, it's good luck and a promise that you'll return. Yes, so make a wish when you throw it over your shoulder. And was not used for fountain upkeep, it's actually donated to charity. So you're not just throwing money away, you're technically donating. No. <laughs> Probably do two 50 cent pieces. Here's a coin for you. Thank you. <laughs> Ready? For the best Treffy experience, go first thing in the morning as soon as you can get here and then get dinner, grab a gelato, walk on over and see it again at night. As our Airbnb was on the way towards ancient Rome, we did one more quick change, hopped on electric bikes and steered more wildly than most Italians on our way to visit the iconic Colosseum. 
We just took a ride movie bike ride. <laughs> <laughs> which got our heart Heartbeat. racing, woke mm -hmm. us up. We took it from our apartment to get to the Coliseum even faster. So we have skipped the line tickets with Get Your Guide. And that way we don't have to wait in line uh -huh. and buy them in person. We just already have the QR code ready to go. Skip the line really does pay off. I think it took us 45 seconds to go through all the gates, through security, and to get inside. And now we're here for about the same ticket price as you get at the gate. You just buy it in advance on the app. It's awesome. Now, I am very excited to see this one more time. We came last July and got to see it all for the first time, and it is harrowing and jaw-dropping for so many reasons. It's construction, but also the terrors of the place. There's a lot to take in. One of the things that impresses me the most is that this is the single largest amphitheater in the world still today and it held 50 to 80,000 people. It was a residence for a family in the medieval times. Like you walk through here and you get so much history all at once of this building that's just stood the test of time. They thought of everything. Even the handrails were specifically designed so you wouldn't fall. So each little section in the bottom was basically a holding cell for people and animals. And then the arena floor, which you see on part of it, is where things would happen. Best times to come would always be in off season. If you can travel in off season, that's the best time to go anywhere. So shoulder seasons, off season, not peak summer. And also you don't want to be here during peak summer. It is just open air, no shade, it's hot. Times to come would be as soon as it opens in the morning, or about an hour, hour and a half before it closes. So if you want to do the Roman Forum first, your ticket normally gets you to, into both the Roman Forum and the Colosseum. So do that and then end the night here right before it closes would be a little less crowded. Same thing with first thing in the morning. First thing in the morning, if your ticket is at 9.30, yeah. you get here a little bit before because there are bus and tour groups as well because everyone's trying to hit it, but it's still gonna be less busy and less hot and less crowded than in the middle of the day. Okay, we just finished the Colosseum and right outside of it is the Roman Forum. It is 10.20 and getting toasty. And if I was a gladiator, I would probably kill for a water, a taco, and a foot massage right about now. And maybe one of those little umbrellas to shade. I'm not rushing through the Roman Forum, I'm just kind of rushing through the Roman Forum. You're gonna enjoy ancient Rome a lot more when it's cooler. Uh, and when it's hot, you just kind of want to get it over with. Which is sad because it it's is. It's, it's very impressive and very special place, but you kind of want it to be somewhat cool while you're doing it. I'm not gonna lie, you're gonna have to use a lot of imagination when you come to the Roman Forum, but there's a lot of renderings in the descriptions of each of the buildings, each of the churches, each of the aqueducts and the road to kind of give you a good little glimpse of what it looked like in ancient Roman times. As you're walking, you can enjoy and listen to the birds sing. Look at the flowers, take it all in, take it in slow, and try to find some shade. Cats, very distracting around here. There's so many, I love them. <laughs> it's hot most of the year, so if you can come during the off seasons or in the winter, I'm sure this place is well worth exploring yeah. for a very long time. But like I said, if you're going through, just listen on an audio tour, give you a quick run through of what you need to know, and head out. There's about the only things to this really ancient Roman time is the Colosseum and the Forum and the Palatine Hill. Once you're done here, you're pretty much done to go to the rest of Rome. After much sweating and sightseeing, we again made time for a quick siesta to avoid the peak sunshine and got ourselves cleaned up for an evening of shopping, strolling, and sightseeing before finding the perfect rooftop bar to enjoy an aperitivo on our final night in Rome. It's important to note two things. When at home, Andrew and I are essentially grandparents and enjoy eating dinner before 6 p.m. When in Rome, Italians don't typically eat dinner until 8 or 9 p.m. Therefore, the aperitivo concept, similar to what Americans know as happy hour, is key. It's the perfect time to unwind from the day, catch up, have a drink and a snack before settling in for an incredible but lengthy late dinner. 
After snacks and drinks with views of the city, we continue to soak up the last moments in Rome until we finish the night with a spectacular dinner of a mix of lasagna, pork, Roman artichokes, and Italian wine. Stick around for our next adventure, embarking on our first cruise in many years. We can't wait to show you what it was like aboard the Disney Dream and to visit two different Caribbean islands. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.